Hello, my darlings. This is Rex Regine, but you can call me Sir. Tonight we'll be undressing your mind, one thought at a time. I run the Tumblr blog, Sir Approves. That's one word, and no fucking hyphens. <laughs> we hate that guy. I've got to tell you the amount of messages that I have gotten. <laughs> With that, uh, we hate that guy. <laughs> oh, it's just, it's been very, very amusing for me. And, uh, you know, it's easy to, to spot uh, an, a fan when they, when they keep pointing that out. I'm in a very good mood this evening. I hope you are, too. I've decided tonight that I was actually going to do the show uh, from my truck. The, I don't know if you can hear it, but the rain is rather soothing. It's sort of a drizzle now, but it was a little heavier before. Uh, I was going to set up on my patio, but there's a lot of street noise and things like that. I, I, I think this is... It's nice for me, and I hope it's nice for you, too. As you well know, the average human attention span is 8 seconds. You are at 1 minute and 13 seconds. You're doing very well. Stay with me. This is a quiet place, a thinking place. If you're a first-time listener, you're not going to see anything on your screen. You're going to have to think and listen as we have our conversation, this is a place to learn and to grow yourself. And thank you very much for being here. Uh, I am not entirely... Oh, you know what? I should, um, I should apologize for the lack of an introduction tonight from our UK darling. Um, I sent her a picture of me. She said I was a very fat, ugly old man and she could not stand the thought of contributing to the show anymore, and uh, she hates my guts, and then she sent me a virtual kick in the balls. I'm just kidding. Relax. She's been very hard at work uh, with her studies, so let's all wish her very well, and uh, a big thank you for all the introductions that we have had, and we look forward to uh, many more to come. Thank you very much, darling. It's a great contribution to the show. Uh, blah, blah, blah. What was I going to talk about tonight? <laughs> <laughs> I'm in such a good mood, I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. Uh, I'm not um, huge into the universe as far as, uh, you know, put things out to the universe and things like that. I am to an extent. Uh, but I am into very much the law of subconscious attraction and letting things flow the way that they should. The reason I'm saying that is because I don't have a formal question tonight. I'm not going to read something right out of my ask box. Um... I've been asked this question four times this week. So I feel like if this question has been asked four times this week, that maybe I should answer the fucking thing. So, tonight's question, in a summary of all of the questions, is can you make a dominant out of someone who is not a dominant? Now, this may get a little tricky. So, at this point, this is where I want you to go get your drink, if you haven't already gotten it, and then I want you to come close, settle in, baby girl, because we've got a lot to talk about. You got your drink? What did you get? Oh, I love that. Every time. Every time. You have the best taste. All right, now, can you make a dominant out of not a dominant? Or a non-dom? Well, the short answer is no. The long answer is yes. So let's start with the no. I don't want to discourage you uh, from trying this. Uh, I don't want you to say, you know, my man's not dominant enough, so I'm just going to walk away. I'll never be happy with him. Uh, so let's get the no right out of the way. I believe that you are born with certain dominant qualities. Even if they don't come out, you know, your whole life, maybe you're not, you weren't dominant in third grade, but you develop dominance as you get older. Most men develop um, a sort of dominance as they get older, which I believe has a lot to do with the attraction of younger women to older men. The dominance that we older men have is genuine. It's not an ego that we carry around um, wrapped in bubble wrap that gets shattered very easily. Our dominance comes from life experience, from knowing what we're talking about, um, and of course, uh, 
if if an older man is good in the bedroom, it is because he has learned how to be good in the bedroom. Uh, so the the short answer is is no, because a, a someone who is born as a quote beta male um, will be a beta male naturally. Uh, someone who's an alpha will be an alpha. These are characteristics and tendencies that we have inside ourselves. Uh, there's nothing wrong with being a, quote, beta male. Not everybody can be an alpha, or that wouldn't be alpha, would it? In our society, we put a, a this sort of idea of the alpha male, the powerful alpha male. You can go on a million videos of how to be an alpha male and alpha this and alpha that. But the truth is, not everyone can be an alpha male. You know, there are only certain a number of alpha males within a certain territory in any any species on Earth. Uh, now, the thing is, is that our intellects give us an edge. Our intellects allow us to become things that we are not necessarily born into which leads us into the long part of the the answer which is yes so the short answer is no because if a man is left to his own devices uh, with no knowledge or desire to be an alpha male uh, he will just be a beta male forever no matter what you want to do no matter what you would like now here's something before we get into the second part that I, I don't normally discuss uh, questions with people, because normally I have all of the answers, as you well know. But in just throwing this idea out today, um, the person that I talked to actually brought up a very good point. They said, well, why does the nice guy and the dominant have to be a different person? Why do they have to be juxtaposed to each other? Because people think that quite a bit. They're like, oh, this, women as a general rule, this man is very nice. I just wish he were a dominant. And, you know, the, the nice guy and the dominant are never really put together when they can be one in the same. I, I would like to think of myself as a, as a very nice man. Uh, but I am also one of the world's premier dominants. And I am also one of the world's most humble men. You are welcome for the laugh. So, now let's get to the long part. That's what she said. <laughs> oh, I'm so stupid. Okay, so we don't all grow up, okay? Um, now, the long part of this question is, what one man can do, another can do. I firmly believe that. Uh, we can all learn to do things. We can all change our habits. We can all change the way that we think. Can a beta male, ah, there's the rain, can a beta male become a dominant male? Of course he can. But he has to know that he's doing it. He has to know that that's what you want from him, and you have to not fight him on these things. Now, since this is a show, and my audience is, is pretty much in the realm of BDSM, I don't think there's anybody who listens who doesn't have a, a little bit of a taste for the lifestyle, as it's called. Um, we're, we're going to address the sexual issues here. Uh, I have this boyfriend, he's very nice, but I just wish he were more dominant. Now, what you mean is you wish he were more dominant in bed. A lot of guys, if it is not spoken to them, you know, I like to be spanked, or if your conversations didn't develop over... Fat Life or Kick Messenger or Tumblr or something where you, you kind of have an idea who that person is and what they're into to begin with. You have a guy and maybe he really would love to spank your ass raw. Maybe he would love that. But he doesn't really know if you're into that and he's not about to grab you by the throat and pin you on the bed, backhand you, and uh, finger fuck you until you squirt all over the sheets. He's not about to do that because he doesn't know that you're into that. Or maybe he's never done that before, but he would really like to. This is where you have to come in 
And I will say a hundred times over, I've said it a thousand times, I'll say it a thousand more times, an open line of communication. Now, this can be very difficult for a woman uh, because it can be embarrassing if that person is not on the same train as you. So you might say, you know, you don't want to come out and just say, you know, I really like being spanked. One, because if you do like being spanked, that means it's happened before and a guy never really wants to know what you did with anyone else. You know, we, we play like we do for the sake of being nice, especially in the first dates, but we, we, men really don't want to know what you did with other men. They really don't, especially if they uh, love you and care for you and have, you know, deep emotions for you. They, they really don't. They are curious uh, but they really don't want to know. So you don't want to say, well, I like being spanked. That's not something you want to say. You want to say, uh, here's a good example. You say something snotty or sassy in a fun way. And he says, well, aren't you in a mood tonight? And you say, what are you going to do? Spank me. And you do that little turn thing that you do and a little look over the shoulder. Now, you see, that's a cue. That's a cue. You're presenting. You are the one presenting the idea of being spanked. So now he's thinking, is she serious? She let me spank her? And, and over time, if he, he, you know, he, it might even be that night. Uh, he, some, you're telling him subconsciously that you are comfortable with the idea. You're not addressing the egoic mind. You're addressing his subconscious. You're sending out a cue that that is something that you would like to experience. Uh, I've been asked through the years a number of times, how do I get my boyfriend a number of times, a number of times, uh, how do I get my boyfriend to be more dominant with me in bed? Look at things. Send him naughties. Are, are you doing your part in the seduction process? I think a lot of women think, uh, you know, that guys should be the ones constantly doing the seducing. Uh, in a relationship, it's weird how women do the seducing in the beginning uh, and men are then left to seduce forevermore. Keep that seduction up. Send send a picture of your butt. You know, if you're comfortable, you know, go back to my video on naughties. If you are comfortable, if you're not comfortable, you know, skip this step, move, turn to side B. Um, mention things in conversation. Uh, send him, you know, a meme that is something, some funny thing about choking, like, the, like, um, you know, that one that's floating around, does your life insurance know that you like being choked when you're having sex? Send him that meme, because it's a joke. So if, if you haven't, if he hasn't uh, put his hand on your throat, but that's something that you really like, or something that you would like, send a meme like that, because you're, you're, you're making things comfortable for him that may not otherwise be comfortable. He doesn't want to sit there and he doesn't want to sit there and have a list and you say, "Well, I like being spanked and I like being choked and uh, I like the shocker and uh, I like to have my ass licked and I like this and I like that." He doesn't want a black and white list. He wants to learn these things about you, but what you're doing is cueing him in with subtleties. Now, he can develop into a sexually dominant man based on his feelings for you and his starting to understand the things that you either like because you have tried them in the past or things that you want to try. So your, your open line of communication is, n in this case, is not just uh, sitting and talking. You are sending him cues about things that you like or would like to try? So the long answer is yes. Yes, you can turn a non-dom into a dom if he wants to become one. The shorter answer is no. The thing that you need to realize, ladies, is that it will take some time and it will take some effort. And he is going to feel ridiculous doing these things. That's just the, it's just part of the learning curve. He will feel ridiculous, you know, when you, when you say, you know, what are you going to do? Put me on your knee, daddy. And, uh, you know, for, for me, that would, 
this sounds ridiculous, but, you know, that would be something almost expected uh, to be said to me uh, where I am now. But there was a time in my life when that, when that would have been a weird thing for a woman to say to me. You know, don't you think? You have, you have to start somewhere. Um, so patience is the key. Can it be achieved? Yes, all things can be achieved. You need to take time and use subtle cues. Don't overwhelm the poor bastard, okay? He uh, probably has enough on his plate. Men, as a general rule, I know you don't think this, women, because there are so many shithead men out there, but when you are with a man, he wants to make you happy. He really does. As a general rule, he really does. Sometimes he just doesn't know how to do it. And I think you can be fair and cut him a little slack in that area because sometimes you don't even know how to make yourself happy, right? What's wrong? I don't know. Are you sure? What's wrong? Everything. Nothing. I don't know. Let's be fair. <laughs> okay? So he wants to do right by you. He wants to please you sexually and emotionally. And if you want, a dom if you want him to be more dominant... You have to act more submissive. It seems counterintuitive, but you have to start somewhere. If you're starting with this material, I really like this guy. This guy is my guy. He's my person. I love him. Or I just really like him a lot. Or I'm very sexually attracted to him. You need to play submissive to bring out his dominant. Does that make sense? In most cases... It is the dominant male who will bring the submissive out of the woman. But we're talking about a role change here. And you need to be submissive to bring the dominant out of him. It is possible. Uh, it's yes or no. He, he has to want to and you have to want him to. There, there has to be some patience involved in that. So I think we've satisfied that question to the universe that asked it four times this week. Uh, I will have plenty more for you next week. I have several sort of hard pressing questions that I need to think a little more about how I'm going to phrase it and how I will answer these things in the matter in a matter of 20 minutes. Um, so if you do like the show, please uh, like subscribe. I thank you very much for listening. Ah, oh, here comes that beautiful rain. Isn't that wonderful? It is the April showers that bring May flowers after all. And what a life lesson there is in that. Until next week, all of my best and all of my love. Sir.